Okay, so today we're going to be talking about strakes in diffusers and why they exist. Now this is something I see a lot of people giving different reasons about on the internet and most of them are generally wrong. Um, I actually decided that to clarify my thoughts on this I should speak to an XF1 person on this to make sure I knew that I was on the right track and I did, I'm not going to give you their name but they confirmed what I was thinking so today I'm going to explain to you why strakes are in diffusers and what they actually do instead of what some people on the internet will say they do. Of course, to understand this lesson, you're first going to need to understand how a diffuser works. Now for this, I recommend another video I've done earlier on how the under tray works. And I'll put that link up here. Let's start with the explanations I often see that aren't really correct. The main one I see is that diffuser strakes are used as a straightening device to stop the flow from branching out. Now this isn't really right because if you think about it, most diffusers actually expand both laterally as well as ramping up. So if we look from the top down, we'll have our under tray here, like say on an F1 car, and the diffuser, let's say the diffuser doesn't reach to the entire perimeter of the under tray because you've got your wheels, the diffuser itself will actually expand out like that. Okay, it will expand outwards as well as upwards. Now, why would we want to stop the flow going out that way if we're literally trying to expand it? It makes no sense. And this is the reason why you see diffuser strakes as being curved. And of course, if it's curved, it's clearly not a flow straightening device. So straight away, we can discount the theory that they are a flow straightening device. Now, the next theory that I hear a lot of is, is that they are vortex generators designed to promote flow attachment inside the diffuser. Now, let's look at the diffuser geometry from the side. If we consider our ramp like that, and we then put in a full length strike, we can see that if this is generating a vortex, it's got to be along this edge. There's going to be some sort of cross flow, and it's coming along this edge. So the vortex is going to be sitting about here. Like, it's going to be a large scale one just because this is a large delta, but the thing is, is that we don't have a big side flow to make that vortex. So the vortex isn't really getting up here. So it's not going to promote the flow attachment there. So that's not going to work too well. And to prove my theory, just so that you don't think I'm crazy, Red Bull, if you see there's an internet shot somewhere of the underside of their F1 car, and they had a diffuser strake that stops there. So it's got none of that. So you can see from that, that this is not going to have any vortex generated here at all. There's just going to be a little guy down here and it's going to be completely out of the influence of the diffuser. So that's that theory disproved as well. And now we can get to the real reason they actually exist. And what that is, is something known as tire squirt. If we consider a tire here, and let's say it's rotating this way, so our car is traveling along that way. As this rolls around here, we have a whole bunch of air essentially being forced up against there by the velocity of the car and the velocity of the free stream air. Now what we can see is down here we have a concentrated area. This tire is rotating this way. So all this air is getting forced into this tiny little bit here ahead of the contact patch. Now that's going to cause an effective barrier and a compression of the air. It's not going to actually compress the air because we're not going fast enough. But it will basically squeeze the air out around the tire and that will create some sort of jetting. Now, if we look at the tire from above, if we consider the contact patch down there, we can see that it's gonna create a jet out either side, there and there. And this usually forms something of a, a turbulent vortex jet. And actually, a lot of working the rear diffuser on F1 cars and stuff like that is about controlling this tire squirt because it's very detrimental. If we consider the view from our diffuser from the top, so imagine that we just have a car with a fully straight under tray and a diffuser at the rear. We can see that if the tire is far away, like on this side, the jetting will miss the diffuser. But if the tire is close on this side, then you'll find that this jet will start to enter the diffuser. Now, because we're trying to get as much diffuser exit area as possible, we really are going to run it as close to the tire as possible. So the closer you get to the tire, and this is a particular problem for road cars where the bodywork goes over the tire, the bigger this tire jetting becomes an issue. We can see that this dirty vortex of air is gonna find its way up into our diffuser up in there. And in here it can do bad things. It can burst, it can cause separation, and it's just gonna mess up the flow of your diffuser and otherwise cause it to be really bad. 
And the way we can stop this is we can try and fence it off from being in there. And this was one of the things about when they were blowing the exhaust over the top of the diffuser to the side, is that they could run a high energy jet of air here, and that would help prevent the tire squirt from reaching the diffuser. Now, once it gets to the diffuser, we can actually do stuff there. If you consider that we segment the diffuser off into multiple smaller channels, we can see that a tire squirt is gonna kinda of get trapped in here. And once it's trapped in there, it's not gonna propagate across into these tunnels. And that's good because even though we've lost a little bit of efficiency here, we're not gonna get it propagating as an efficiency loss in the other tunnels and the other tunnels will stay nice and attached. But of course, it gets better. You may know by now that vortices can be used as ways to be barriers to flow as they entrain flow. And what we can do is we can use a vortices generated off the bottom of our diffuser to stop that tire squirt coming across. Now, of course, as it's coming out, this is going to inherently produce a vortex. And not just that, but as I explained in my diffuser video, the under tray is going to inherently draw in air from the sides. And this will produce a vortex along the sides going down here. Now, the problem there is that the propensity of a vortex to burst or break down is directly related to its swirl number, which is the ratio of swirling versus its axial velocity. Now, if the axial velocity is constant, we can see that a more intense vortex is going to be more likely to burst, therefore may not survive the tire squirt. If we have our veins here, actually instead of straightening, they instead are pulling out more, they will produce a vortex off them as well. Now, we can see that this is going to actually reduce the load, the effective aerodynamic cross flow on this outer bit. And basically, by doing that, we're sharing the vortex load across the two, the strake and the outside diffuser fence. By doing that, we can use this vortex to better defend against the tire squirt because it's not going to have as many issues with breaking down due to it. Looking from the back of the diffuser, we can see that if this vortex forms here like this, so consider the ground plane along here, we can see that we're gonna get a vortex here and a vortex here, and obviously opposite direction vortices here and here. And the thing is, is that, let's say the tire jetting gets in here and starts screwing up this area. Let's say that we designed it poorly and it's trying to get further across. This vortex will then proceed to block it. And we can also use that to prevent the ingress of general air, not just the tire jets. And by using that, we can make our diffuser more efficient by having more vortices, not at the top, as many people say, but at the base. And this is one of the reasons why in some of the old F1 cars, they used to run strakes in the diffuser with L kicks like that. Now, I've drawn those vortices a little bit off here. If you were to just have a straight diffuser, the vortex would be up here, not as effective. If you have an L-shaped diffuser, the flow will bank up against here and then it will spill over here, moving the vortex much closer to the ground than the original position it would have been over there. And that makes it more efficient without getting your ground clearance any closer down. So there you have it. That's the reason why diffusers have strakes. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you.